Hey, good evening. It is so good to be with everyone tonight. This is week three, and I hope you're ready. I told you we were taking the first couple of weeks slow, and everybody has been um, so appreciative of that. I hope tonight everybody's going to be okay by the end of the evening. I will promise you, you will sleep well tonight. Um, as you may have seen on the post or up on the screen, we're looking at the new IQ, improving your child's working memory. And so we had talked about the first week, how when you have a child that's struggling, how you will actually have some testing done and you may get the processing score and the working memory score and comprehension and fluid reasoning and visual spatial reasoning and what you're typically going to see if your child gets a diagnosis of a some type of learning disability then you're probably going to see a low working memory score in relationship to the other scores so working memory may be low and also processing, possibly both. And so that's why the first week we focused on processing because as just kind of as a reminder for everybody, if we're not processing what we're seeing and hearing accurately, then we can't really do anything with it, can we? And so that's why that emphasis was put there those first two weeks. So now, I hope everybody has been doing your homework. Um, we had looked at taking our deck of cards and saying our numbers, right? And then we looked and we said our colors. And then we even said our shapes and our suits that we have on the card, right? So we did that with a deck of cards and then we also looked at that, doing it with UNO cards. Everybody remember that? And hopefully you've been practicing with your kids. I've been getting some amazing emails from many of you guys who are doing it and what you're seeing with your students and even with yourselves, which is also that extra added bonus with Equipping Minds. And then also if you have been using your Blink cards. Too. So with any of those, and I also brought out set and quitch, that you could do those for processing. Last week, we took a look at our animal page and our number page and our vowel page. And we're going to be looking at a little bit of each of those this evening. So the best way to help you understand working memory is really that ability to hold on to multiple step directions. And that's probably one of the biggest things that you'll see with students and with adults. So when you're working with a student and they're having difficulty remembering the steps to the math problem, or they're having difficulty remembering their parts of speech, so to speak, or remembering to put the period there or to capitalize proper names, the forms they should use in writing. They're not visualizing their letters for spelling. You know, so many different things that you're seeing with your student and you may feel like the parent who I get a call from every week, it's not the same parent, it's always a different one, but they're telling me, you know, my child is 14 years old and we're stuck, we're stuck. We're now a couple years behind and we knew this, or yesterday he seemed to know it, but today he doesn't. And by that point, you're frustrated as a parent, whether it's, that your child is in public school and you're coming home and doing homework and homework is an absolute nightmare and that's where you, you can really see that fight, flight or freeze kick in 
that we talked about the first week with the fear paralysis reflex. So that's um, just crucial that we, you know, we're going to look more at that. I hope some of y'all went on and um, looked at our website under the reflexes and saw some information there. But so that can be a really tough time because guess what? They just heard the instructions hours ago and then you're sitting down to do homework and they may not even remember what the teacher actually told them to do. And so that can be really frustrating. Um, I'm just gonna tell you a hundred times over, if you're ever working with your child and you're feeling frustrated, stop whatever you're doing. Stop the madness, please. Um, because nobody is, is learning. We can't teach when we're frustrated and they can't learn when we're frustrated or they're frustrated because their brain's just shutting down and going into survival mode and that's where you're gonna see that, you know, outburst of anger or the, you know, let me just go get a drink of water or I need to go to the bathroom or I need, and so they're finding a way to get out of it or they're totally just shut down. So that's where you'll hear people say, when that's going on, no learning can happen. And so once again, the reason that we use games is because games can be very playful and safe. And um, now with the games that we're doing, as you've heard me say, it's never gonna be like the game set, so to speak. It's gonna be very intentional. And so tonight, I hope you're ready we're going to start with our deck of cards, and this is for you all. You should have your handouts. Um, if someone does not have your handout, I will tell you that they are in a couple places. They're actually on the Equipping Minds website. If you go to shop and then go to games, you're gonna see this handout there that you're gonna have access to to print. If you go to the Equipping Minds YouTube page, it's also going to be there under week one and week two. So everyone will have access to those. So what we're working on tonight with our deck of cards is going on to step the next step on three where we're gonna alternate saying the number, the color, and the suit. So, let's do this together. Now, remember, if anything's ever challenging, I'll say, let's do this together, I will help you, okay? So now, let's say our number, 10, color, black, suit, diamonds, Two, black, black diamonds. diamonds. Seven, Seven, black, black hearts. hearts. Nine, Nine, black hearts. hearts. Four, Four, black, black hearts. hearts. Three, red clubs. How's everybody feeling? Okay, so we've got all of y'all on online watching this recording and then the group that's here in person. And as we're doing that, you can hear people start strong. You may be working with your child or a group of adults and you'll see that the further you go, they may start making errors. And so if they make an error, and we're gonna work on that for a minute, okay? So how we would handle that. So let's go back, and now we're going to say number, color, suit. But if we were going to say number, eight, and let's say here on color, the student actually said six. Okay? My response, two things, I, three actually, I would either just pause and not flip the next card and see if they check themselves and self-corrected and said, oh, red. Or 
I would say, you know, that is six. But if this was eight, whose turn is it? Oh, red. Or I would simply just say, check. Okay. What I'm not going to say is, no, <laughs> wrong. What were you thinking? Okay. Um, so those are three different ways that I would do that with a student. What is the guilt so when we're going doing this with a student and if you're seeing that they're struggling, that's where you're always doing it with them and you're prompting. So for example, let's take our blink cards. Okay, so number, Green. color, Green. shape, Brown. number, Brown. color, Brown. shape. Brown. Okay, so see how I'm prompting? And so keep prompting with your student if they're, this is challenging. Now for some students, what you're going to need to do is just start with number, four, and then color, gray, two, yellow, and just start with two things. And you can do that as well with a deck of cards. You can do that easily with your UNO cards. Okay, so let's do that with UNO. You ready? So number, Five. color, Red. number, Three. color, Three. Seven. Two. yeah, so go back, so if this is seven, whose turn, Blue. nice, seven. Three. Five. Five. Red. red, five, five. Yellow. yellow, okay, so now one thing we were also doing there is you're seeing one at a time. That's actually harder. So if you're um, with someone in person or even when we work with students online, I will do two piles. So I'll put them down and say, oh, five red, eight blue. And so there's, you can see, oh, number, color, and then if you're doing three things, and you can also do this, okay? You can even come in and mix your UNO cards and your blink cards. It's okay to mix. You could do eight blue triangles. Okay, and then do number, color, shape, and put those in. Since on UNO cards, we don't have a shape. Or you could use your deck of cards for your shape with your UNO. Um, so there's many different things you can do with that. So I wanted us to warm up with those tonight because now we're going um, to the more challenging ones that I am so excited to share with y'all. And, um, but I want to talk about this just a minute. I told y'all that a few years ago, I went back five years ago now, it doesn't even seem that long, to get my doctorate in education to do a full-blown research study with Equipping Minds. And what I didn't tell you is this. Um, my entire research study was based on increasing working memory. And so back then, you would have heard me do talk after talk after talk on the importance of working memory, the importance of working memory, and how crucial it is. And that is absolutely true, okay? Um, and, and I also encouraged you, and once again, greatly encouraging you to go to the Equipping Minds website and click on the research tab and please read the research. 
Um, it, it may be a little daunting initially, okay? Um, but if you'll let yourself read through it, maybe some of y'all have, have tried to, but it was, it's, you really can make it through it, okay? But what happened in the research study was this. I had said that if we could increase working memory, that then that would increase students' verbal abilities, their nonverbal abilities, their IQ, that it would increase their visual spatial working memory, their verbal working memory, and generalize to academics. Wow, I was looking at a lot. And most research studies don't look at all those things in nine academic sub-areas. But really, in the field of what I do in cognitive neuroscience, if you can't generalize it to real life, if they just were getting better at the games, what would be the point? There wouldn't. And so it needed to be able to generalize to their fluid intelligence, that problem-solving ability, their verbal abilities, their language, their academics, their reading, their math, their science, all of those things. And because of what we had seen with, with Rose, and in this um, study it says Marie, that you got to hear about last week, and you can read more of her story there as well, because of that, it made me just have the need, really, to go back and do this research. Because I needed to be the voice for those who have no voice, is really what I needed to do. However, when they took the 32 students at the school that we did the research study, they all had a diagnosis of what's called an SLD. And so it's a learning disability that could have been dyslexia, dysgraphia, a little bit of ADHD. It's just a specified learning disorder that you'll see with students. So they're basically struggling with reading and math and writing. But in all of those 32 students, their psychologicals, their working memory score was also impaired. Well, what we did in the study, we had the students do their primitive reflex exercises. They're maintaining brains every day for 15 minutes at home. And then they played equipping minds for an hour every day, five days a week for seven weeks. That was the scope of time we had. And then the other group did more academics, okay? They actually had an hour of more academic tutoring, which is the typical intervention that you will see students have. So that's what they were doing. And let me pull up what we're going to be working on. And... So with this, we would come in and play the games. And the one we're going to look at right now, we looked at last week. With our animals, um, was one of their favorite, OK? And the animals. As we saw last week, and I, I shared with you how it could help increase processing by the students saying it over and over again, well, what ended up happening was, yes, that processing is getting faster, but um, so in the study, we were seeing the students progressing as you're going to these eight weeks through these different exercises, and most of them, you're going to be learning, okay? So tonight's kind of that next step in a more advanced level that I'm taking you guys to. But as they were progressing and we were seeing all this and the kids were having a lot of fun, we had two kids working at one time, 
with a trainer. We were also hearing positive reports just about their confidence in class as well. And we were seeing kids coming in, kind of um, bouncing in, so to speak, to their time to do Equipping Minds. We really never had anybody that didn't want to do it. And we didn't have a single person who did not complete the study. But at the end of the study, we first tested their working memory. And even though the students went up on their verbal and their visual spatial and on a paired T test, you saw strong statistically significant gains. When we ran in, in research what's called a regression analysis, we actually couldn't say that their working memory increased because of equipping minds. And it was like, oh no, that was what I was trying to prove. And it didn't happen when we ran the second group of testing. But then I thought, well, Carol, you never said it would happen in 30 hours. When you work with someone in your clinic, it's always 60 hours. You never said just 30 hours. And so I, I really should not have been surprised. <laughs> But my entire dissertation, y'all, was based on that that was going to happen. And if that happened, then guess what? Their verbal, their academics, all these other things would go up, right? And I thought, okay, well, so we did the post-testing on those. And I thought, well, I guess they're not going to go up because we didn't get the, as much of a gain in working memory as we wanted. But then my statistician came and said, I have to talk to you. Their verbal and nonverbal scores went up 14 and 16 points. Their IQ went up 14 points, almost a standard deviation. You got statistically significant gains. Equipping minds increases IQ and verbal and nonverbal and reasoning. And no program in the, other, in the world has ever proven that without significant gains in working memory. And so I was dumbfounded, absolutely dumbfounded. I proved something. I answered a question that I didn't even ask. What would happen if we can't get significant gains in working memory? Can we still increase IQ? And the answer was yes. I was never more pleased to be wrong in my life. And my husband will tell you, that's not usually the case. And then we got their academic scores back. And my statistician called and said, hey, I've got to come talk to you. And we were so blessed that Center College was just five minutes um, in Danville, Kentucky, from where my offices were at that time. And uh, Dr. Jeff Heath is a statistician and with the math department there, and so I, I hired kind of the best of the best to run my stats. And then when he called and he said, I got to come talk to you, and he said, Equipping Minds generalizes to academics. Your kids went up higher on seven out of the nine academic areas. Well, y'all with what you're seeing. Are we doing reading? Are we doing math and science and social <laughs> studies and spelling? Through these eight weeks, it will never look like those academic subjects. But remember, what did my active control group get? And this was most studies will not have a true active control group where the other group is getting 30 hours of intervention and the intervention they were getting right before test time more academics so how in the world did the kids playing games go up higher on seven out of the nine areas and when you looked at a pair t test it was statistically significant in reading science and spelling in just 30 hours 
And then when we ran the regression analysis, science held on. And so we answered a question that no other program in the world has ever been able to answer. And that was mind blowing. And that was God. Because guess what? Was I just training working memory? No. You've heard me say what we're going to be looking at, equipping minds, works on processing. It looks at what we call our cognitive functions that Dr. Ruben Feuerstein, who I had mentioned, had laid out. We are looking at comprehension. We're looking at reasoning. We're using a human mediator, a person, okay? We're able to slow down. We're able to adjust. We're using language. We're using play. We weren't just training working memory alone. But in so much research, what happens, and in so many research studies, they wouldn't have liked that I was using so many tools to impact a child's brain. So many times they want to know, well, what's that one thing? Yo, it's not one thing. It will never be one thing. Nutrition will be important. Reflexes will be important. Visual processing, auditory processing, working memory, comprehension, all of those things. How the child is dealing with stress and trauma. We are holistic, whole people. And so that's why we've got to put it all together. Okay, so you ready? Let's do it. Let's put it all together. So when we're looking at our animals and you've got them up there and we have them here and um, I'm going to have my dry erase marker. And just to review, the first thing let's do is just read our animals again from left to right. You ready? Let's do it. Penguin, giraffe, bear, bird, spider, camel, chicken, pig, zebra, snake, tiger, elephant, turtle, cow, fish, cat, frog, crab, bee, horse. Okay, so now you get to hear some of my favorite words. I think you've probably been hearing them the first couple weeks. I see you drawing a circle around the bear. And then I'm going to ask you this question. What do you see yourself doing? And you're going to say, I see myself drawing a circle around the bear. You ready? Okay. So, I see you drawing a circle around the bear. What do you see yourself doing? I see myself drawing a circle around the bear. And when I draw a circle, I like to start at two o'clock. So I'll start at two, I use a bigger marker. And draw my circle around the bear. Okay, nicely done. Now let's go ahead and we will erase our circle. I see you erasing your circle. Now, I see you drawing a circle around the bear. Then I see you drawing a box around the snake to keep him in. What do you see yourself doing? I see myself drawing a circle around the bear. I see myself drawing a box around the snake to keep him in. Now, if you have students who aren't good with their boxes, I might put a dot, four dots, and to help them learn to connect those. Or I might do line, down, down, across, across. Okay? Because you're going to have some um, folks who their motor skills, that's going to be um, challenging for them, but I want you, that's how you're going to help them. 
Okay, so now I see you are racing. Okay, now I could just stop there with two things. However, because of how I want to take this class, we are going to add a third thing. But remember, this is something I want you working on all week with your students, okay? So getting these first three down is going to be important. So now, I see you draw a circle around the bear, then I see you draw a box around the snake to keep him in, then I see you draw an X on the fish. What do you see yourself doing? I see myself drawing a circle around the bear. I see myself drawing a box around the snake to keep him in. I see myself drawing an X on the fish. Okay. Now, take a look up here. This, here, here we go. This is a major, major piece of equipping minds right here. Take a look and tell me, what animal do you see inside my circle? A bear. What animal do you see inside my box? A snake. What animal do you see under the X? A fish. Okay? So we're going to remember that a circle is a bear, a box represents our snake, and X represents the fish. Okay? Now, let's erase these going backwards. I see myself erasing the X on the fish. I see myself erasing the box around the snake. I see myself erasing the circle around the bear. Okay, excellent. Now, I was super nice to everybody here in the room and who are watching on Facebook Live. I'm just going to tell you, typically when I do this with a group of um, teachers or parents, I would have just said to you, Okay, I need you to circle the bear, box the snake, X the fish, triangle the cat, put a line under the elephant, and a line above the turtle. Okay, begin. And no one's ever been able to do it. But every single day in life, in class, we actually do give <laughs> students four and five directions without even realizing it. Okay, well, as I will say that brushing your teeth is an eight-step direction. If you think about needing to get to the bathroom, pick up the toothbrush, <laughs> take the lid off the toothpaste, put it on your toothbrush, right? There are a lot of steps we could keep going. Someone may even say, well, for my child, there's probably 15 steps to brushing their teeth. But this is where you will hear me use the language, I see you. Because that is so crucial. So as a teacher, as a parent, um, we use it in my house. We've used it in my house for oh, over 20 years. Um, it helps with quite a few things. So I imagine that in some houses that maybe you ask your children or your husband or in your classroom, you ask students to do something, and maybe they do the first thing you said or the last thing, and they might miss the middle thing, or they might reverse a couple things. Um, and so when you say to someone, and you ask them, hey, can you take the blue trash can to the curb for me? And then can you take the clothes out of the washer and put them in the dryer? And then can you take, you know, the f chicken out of the freezer and put it in the refrigerator to thaw? And they say, and you're like, okay, can you do that for me? And they said, oh, yeah, I got it. And then later you come back and, oh, 
I didn't see the trash can app. Oh, well, you didn't ask me to do that. Or, oh, I thought you said, okay, and something's missing. But what happens when you say to someone, I see you, and then you ask them, what do you see yourself doing? They're responding back to you. And then you know, did they hear you? I can't tell you how many times parents will say, you know, well, I told them, go get your backpack. Put your shoes on. Okay, rather, hey, I see you getting your backpack, then I see you getting your shoes. What do you see yourself doing? Okay, I see myself getting my backpack, then I see myself getting my shoes. Okay, go do it. And how that will happen. Now, I will also tell students, you can say to mom, I see you getting some mint chocolate chip ice cream for me at the store. What do you see yourself getting for me? Um, in my house, when we want something done, there's always an I see you before the request. So kind of keep that in mind, the importance of I see you. Okay, the next one we're going to do is our numbers one through five. So we're going to look at these. Okay, and we're going to look at our first couple rows. And y'all have been working on these. You've been reading your numbers, reading the colors with your student. And the um, next thing we can also do on this one is what we're going to first do tonight with this one. You're going to see a lot of overlap here. And we're going to start out. And I see you drawing a circle around the ones. What do you see yourself doing? I see myself drawing a circle around the ones. And so we go in and draw our circle the one Circle the one, circle the one, circle the one, circle the one, and go in and put a circle on your ones, okay? The other thing that you're going to notice on this sheet is that the ones are also green. Now, I gave you this sheet in the Equipping Minds book. You have a colored sheet, but you also have a black and white sheet. So um, we would do this one for most students on the black and white sheet, but you may have some students who need to do it on the color sheet. And so then what they would be doing, they would come in and they would say, I see green on one, 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 and they're putting the green cubes on the ones and covering up the ones. And when they're doing that, they're also, you're working on them using that pincer grip because that's going to help with handwriting and fine motor skills. And then I want to show you this. You're going to be able to do that as well, and I'm going to pull this out um, for you for just a second because I want to teach this together. Do you see this with your vowels? What color is A? Green. So we're actually going to go in as well, and I'm going to say, I see you, and this depends on your student. You may be at first just learning the letter name, okay? If your student doesn't know their letter names yet, do that first. But otherwise, we're going to work on the vowel sound. So you're going to go in, I see you draw a circle around the A, or you can say A, ah, okay? And then you can say circle, A, ah, 
Let's do this together. I see myself circle, ah. I see myself circle, ah. I see myself circle, <laughs> ah. Okay? And so we also talked about using the phonics phone. Um, and let me grab that. And this, we saw it as just PVC pipe and coming up to their right ear and saying ah. And then when we're learning ah, I. So then you're making sure they're hearing that sound correctly. Okay. So now let's jump back to our numbers. And I, I'm working on you guys seeing this correlation here. I see you erasing the circle around the ones. What do you see yourself doing? I see myself erasing the circle around the ones. Okay, now we're going back and we're adding. Now, wait, we're going to do this together. So I'm going to model first. Okay, I see you draw a circle around the ones, then I see you draw an X on the twos. Now, what do you see yourself adding to the twos? I see myself drawing an X on the twos. So when we do this, it's going to look like this. I see myself X the two. Circle the one, circle the one, circle the one, X the two. Circle the one, X the two. Circle the one, X the two. Okay? A lot of times what people want to do is go in and find all the ones. And then go in and X all the twos. And that would be just doing one thing at a time. And that wouldn't be working on your working memory. OK? So I'm going to erase this, and we're going to do this together. And please know this is something you can absolutely do in a classroom. And we all know that choirs and dance teams all need to be working together, right? Basketball teams. <laughs> Um, when you're on any kind of team, you're doing it together. So you can absolutely do this in unison, out loud, because the ability to listen and take notes is also another thing that you're strengthening here, because here they're using language while they're doing it and remembering the symbols. So you ready? So let's, we're going to do just four rows. So we'll start with two. So uh, what do I see you doing? We'll say, I see myself X the two, circle the one, circle the one, circle the one, X the two, circle the one, X the two, circle the one, X the two. And then, if you're looking here, you notice that blue is what color? Uh, two is what color? <laughs> it's blue. It's blue. So this is where we're going to go in. And I would say, I see us putting blue on two. But when we would do this, this is where they're going to go in. And they're going to say, I see blue on two. I see green on one, and they'll put I see green on one, I see green on one, I see blue on two. And then when you have it filled up, you come in and you touch. What number do I see under here, under blue? Two. two. Who's under Green? One. one. Who's hiding under green? One. Who's hiding under green? One. Who's hiding under blue? Two. Two. Okay? 
So we're building on that. The same thing is what we would do with our vowels. And so you'll notice on our vowels, what color is E or A? Blue. It's blue. So I see you drawing a circle around your A or A, and then I see you drawing an X on your E or A. Okay, so what do you see yourself doing to the E? An X. I see myself drawing an X on the E. And so we're going to go in and do the same thing with that. Okay, ready? Okay, so... I see myself drawing a circle around the A. I see myself drawing an X on the A. I see myself drawing an X on the A. I see myself drawing a circle around the A. I see myself drawing an X on the A. I see myself drawing an X on the A. I see myself drawing a circle around the A. Ah. I see myself drawing a circle around the A. Ah. Okay, and so you would do that. Now, let's come here just a minute. We could also come in, and I could even just show them these. So I have a question. What letter is in my circle? A. What number is in my circle? One. What color would be, it would be green. What animal was in my circle? A bear. Okay, so what letter was under my X? E or F, because we have two things that it goes with. What number did I see you put an X on? Two. two. And what color did we put with two? Blue. What animal did I see you put an X on? Fish. Okay. So then, okay, so everybody, everybody in the room, we're all still good, right? Everybody's still good? Okay, um, do you see where we're going? Okay, so as we're doing this, on your tic-tac-toe boards, you're also going to notice that the bear is in that first position. The fish is there. You're going to also see your one on your tic-tac-toe board, and we'll get to look at that more. Um, but now we're going to add the third thing. We have just a few minutes, okay? And you're probably like, I am so glad you have just a few minutes. Um, but when you're doing this with a student, it is fine to just focus on the numbers, okay? But for the purposes of this class, I wanted, I really wanted you to see all the overlap, okay? that many, many, uh, what, computer training programs, things that say, well, this is a working memory game, or this is whatever, all those things are games in isolation. One thing that is very unique about Equipping Minds is that all of the games overlap. So, when they are actually even taking their UNO cards and they could say eight red and then tell me the animal, it would be a fish because the color's blue. Okay, I know, I know. 
So then we even bring back in our UNO cards and our blink cards because they're going to learn that green represents this could be a number, a color, a letter, an animal, a sound. And it's also a circle, even though you're looking at a triangle, okay? So there's, and that's because in school, in life, we're dealing with numbers and sounds and letters and images and symbols all simultaneously. That's how learning and knowledge happen. And so, I know, everybody, I'm going to get all kinds of emails, I'm sure, tonight, because everybody was like, the first two weeks were so slow, and then you just, like, slammed us tonight. Um, but we are going to go ahead and learn the third one. Okay, we have just four minutes, but you guys got this. You know what? Because we're doing this together. I will help you. Okay, so I see us going back to our numbers and so i see you drawing a circle around the ones then i see you drawing an x on the twos then i see you drawing a box around the threes what do you see yourself drawing on the threes a box so here we go let's just do a couple rows so let's do it together i see myself drawing an x on the two a circle around the one, a circle around the one, a box around the three, a box around the three, a circle around the one, an X on the two, a circle around the one, a box around the three, an X on the two. Okay, so then we could look at those we would also go in and I would say, I see you put green on one, I see you put blue on two, and now I see you put red on three. And so we would add those in and we would say, I see blue on two, I see green on one, I see green on one, I see red on three and we would put those on there. So y'all are gonna have a busy week with your kiddos, but then take a look up here, and from following that pattern that we were looking at, we would also do that. I would see us put a box around the I for I, and it is red when you look at your sheet. But when we look here, let's do this together. So what number is X? Two. What color? Blue. What animal? Fish. What letter? Or vowel? E. What vowel sound? F. Here's a circle. What number? One. What color? Green. What animal? Bear. What vowel? A. What vowel sound? A. Ah. So here's a box. What number? Three. What color? Red. What animal did we box? A snake. What vowel? I. What vowel sound? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so the overlap, you get to start seeing how, y'all, every single game in Equipping Minds is going to build and build on each other. And this is what, when you read your research and you look and you hear about the brown end back, that's where we are building. So you have already learned tonight the symbol the number, the color, the animal, the vowel, and the vowel sound. Six things that are associated with that symbol. Okay? Um, and so, but that's why, y'all, that's why those things in isolation seemed easy the first couple weeks. 
But y'all, that's why in school, in life, when you see a student, all of a sudden they can't remember. They can't hold on to all that. It's because, wait, we just put all those things together at one time. And you got to just feel that. So hopefully you'll all sleep well tonight. I thank everybody for being here. We're going to be adding the next steps next week. Um, but I'm just so excited to be able to get into the um, kind of the heart of the Equipping Minds program with you guys. But um, everyone, have a wonderful week and practice your homework. Thank you.